All right, hey guys, Scott here with Adventure Further, and uh, today we have a 2023 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Eco Diesel. And with that, I have to say, we went down, took like four or five months to get this Jeep and uh, ended up going to Tennessee to work with a dealer down there, Gupton Motors. Phenomenal people, never even met the people, treated me wonderfully over the phone and via email was how we made the purchase actually. And got this thing back and had it for about three days and all the stuff that you see here was already sitting at the shop ready to go. So one thing that I am absolutely excited to talk about today is, the, is this, because as you can see from looking at it, there is nothing stock on this thing. I virtually, at our shop, I took this personally with some help of a couple of the guys at my shop, took this thing down to nothing. And when I say nothing, it was a frame and a body with all the suspension components ripped off of it. The front bumper was ripped off of it. All the control arms are ripped off of it. The axles are ripped out of it. Uh, exhaust, the fuel tank, everything came out of this thing down to bare bones. There were some uh, Instagram, uh, I guess, posts that I made as I was kind of building it along and giving some updates. But here it is, it's finally done. And I will start in the front of this thing and work our way to the back because there is a lot to cover here. We have a front bumper from Next Venture Motorsports. They are a, one of the leading manufacturers of all aluminum bumpers with all new designs. And I tell you, the look of it, the profile of it, everything was right on par with what I was looking for. So we started a relationship with them and pretty much went all in with them for bumpers and armor. So I actually have their front bumper along with their entire skid plate system, all aluminum skid plate system that runs from front to back, their entire kit. And it is turning out to be great. We're actually gonna be headed out to a show here, Expo. So that's one piece of a, a news I guess I wanna tell everybody is that we are now this year attending Overland Expo West in Flagstaff, Arizona. May 19th through the 21st. So I hope to see you there because this Jeep is actually gonna be featured in the Ursa Miner booth. It's a real honor to work with John from Ursa Miner. Having this thing as such a hardcore rock crawler that I set it up for and, and what we envisioned, my wife and I envisioned to build this Jeep out to be, it's not our first Jeep and we've built a few other ones out, but it, it's turning out to be exactly what we wanted along with working with John because over there at Ursa Miner, their top is about 150 pounds heavier than the factory top, which will still allow us to not overload this thing and go rock crawling with it, which we do still love to rock crawl. We kind of do a mix. I don't want to just overland. I don't want to just camp out remotely all the time. Sometimes it's nice to have the luxuries of the motor home and the two Jeeps and go for a full weekend rock crawling with some good friends and a bunch of new friends that we meet as we're there. And so we are going to be in their booth. You'll be able to see the entire Jeep there as it is. And uh, the install has, as you can see, hasn't been done yet. So we're actually going to California prior to Overland Expo West to get that installed. And then we'll see you there. Going on to this front bumper that we already talked about. Baja Designs lights. I, we've tried all of them. I've tried Rigid, we've tried, um, uh, what is some of the other ones here? Oracle, we've done some Oracle lighting and I just can't seem to get away from the Baja designs. The look of the lights, the, pro, the profile of the lights, we like to stick with these LP6s. As you can see on the windshield, we actually have their LP4s, which not many people are running LP4s on their windshield, but the, the, the style of the light just blows both of us away. And so we wanted to run their LP6s and their LP4s. Our 450 has LP9s on it. And with that, I love, 
I love to, to stick with these Baja design lights. And so I think for us, we're gonna work on getting a partnership built with Baja just because we've slowly switched over to their lights. And uh, as of right now, I don't intend on switching unless somebody says anything different to me and shows me that something's better. These Baja design lights are just phenomenal. Along with that, we got a Warren Xeon 12S winch. Um, we wanted to make sure the 10S we have on some of the other Jeeps, the smaller Jeeps, lower Jeeps that don't weigh as much like Ashley's two door. The 12S just, I wanna make sure we got the power. I wanna make sure that the line, I mean the line capacity I believe is the same between them, but I just wanna make sure we had the power over and over again. If we need a recovery situation on a trail, rock crawling, anything, we have it. With that, we actually have a Factor 55 Fairlead. We love the Factor 55. We kind of um, made our way over to, to their company as well and work with them to get these Factor 55 Fairleads. Very great product, very strong. I've yet to see one break or anything like that, so we stuck with that. We actually went with the LED package from Jeep. These headlights are actually stock headlights. We did not switch these over to anything else. I know our uh, Green Gladiator, the General, that one we actually switched over to KC LED lights, but we actually did the LED package straight from Jeep. Cost a little bit more, but it's really a great, great light. We figured this Jeep uh, is going to Alaska, and this is one of the purposes we bought it. This is an Eco Diesel. So this has the 3.0 Eco Diesel, which has a boatload of torque. We've had a couple three sixes in the past, just not for us. We did a bunch of Hemi swaps, done that. Still own those Jeeps that have Hemi swaps. Granted, those are great for power on this. We wanted to have two Jeeps that are simultaneously the same exact Jeep. And so the General and the Major are identical power plants with a tuned performance uh, motor along with a stainless steel back, TIG welded exhaust from front to back and that exhaust is to die for. So towing wise, towing our 4,000 pound off-road trailer behind us, we just got back from a trip in New Mexico, which that video will be coming at a later date. We are, we towed that thing 3,500 miles without any hiccups whatsoever. Truly with this big of a wheelbase, I had no issues even towing it behind there. My wife drive it the entire time and there was no, like even sway, the trailer will sway back and forth, but the Jeep was just stable. And the reason it was stable was actually because of the off-road only sway bars. Off-road only sway bars makes a dual rate sway bar that is absolutely amazing for on-road. It's way stiffer than, for, than the factory sway bar. The off-road only sway bar, all it is is a, is a lever which you'll actually flip the lever over, instantly goes from having a on-road sway bar to a off-road sway bar. So when you're off-road articulating, going down gravel trails and really going through some washes, you still have sway control. So with that, the, the off-road only sway bar, we did the mechanical ones, they do offer an air operated sway bar, but that's not something that we wanted to tackle. I didn't want, to pop, not that it would fail, but it's something with us doing all the hardcore rock crawling that I intend on doing with it. I didn't want that chance of a failure. So I didn't want to deal with airlines, air leaks and stuff like that. So simple is easy. And that's why we went with the mechanical ones. We actually have their one-off prototype currently. They're in the works of releasing those coming up and their rear one, they just came out with, which you'll see that here shortly when we work our way around the back but they have a rear sway bar. So not only do I have the front one, I have a rear one. This thing, when I say stable, it is stable. I've used anti-rocks before and there was way too much body roll with it on road, off road, absolutely phenomenal. If you have an off road rig, you don't go on the road very much. Anorox work absolutely wonderful. I've had them in other Jeeps and uh, we've also had Apex Designs. I've worked with them very closely before knowing about off-road only. The Apex Designs are another really great sway bar. The only thing with that is on-road capabilities are absolutely phenomenal, but the minute you go off-road and, you, un and you, un you turn a little valve on top, you do that, you lose all properties of a sway bar the minute you're off-road. It just basically releases your sway bar so that you don't have any bind or anything like that and gives you full articulation. 
All three of these sway bars, I have not seen any limit to my sway, you know, as far as suspension travel, I have not seen any limit. And so all three of them, I would say are definitely a good choice. But for us with all the on and off-roading we do, and I wanna be able to definitely go down the road at 75 miles an hour with these Jeeps, it may not look it with the tires that are on it, but we wanna make sure that uh, we're on road, we're, we're safe on road going. Where we're gonna go here is actually to our Fox shocks. So if you come over and you see these Fox shocks, we actually have um, 2.5 Fox series performance racing shocks on this thing, which we, after our 3,500 mile trip that we just got done taking, ride quality, I would say is phenomenal. <laughs> um, I didn't think I would drive all the way from New Mexico as a personal thing all the way back when we have a truck and trailer, but we ended up doing it. And I can say that it wasn't that bad actually. Having these Fox shocks made a world of difference. Normally uh, we've ran King shocks on a lot of stuff, but with Fox, we wanted to try something a little different. I have them in my Ford Raptor and my Ford Raptor rides like a dream. So I wanted to try them out on here. And so far having the adjustments here, we actually are able to adjust these shocks on the fly if we want to get out and turn the dampening up or less. If we're going down a bumpy road, we're able to soften it up and without airing down the tires, but generally we air down the tires. So that's one thing um, that you're able to do if you like, but tentatively, you know, if you're just driving it quickly down a gravel road, you just can adjust these real easily. Coming around here, we actually have our Mickey Thompson Pro XS tires. One of our absolute favorite tires that we could possibly run are Mickey's. I have them on my wife's, my wife's truck. I have them on most of our other Jeeps and the tire of choice has definitely become the Mickey Thompson's. Uh, they're, the look of them, the profile of them, the longevity of them, all of those things combined turned out to be just one great, great tire for off-roading the Pro XS's far exceed all the ones that I've had. I've had traps before. I do like traps a lot, but with having these, they seem to just grab and bite so much more, but they also, if you don't have the right axle set up, they will destroy axles. So on this, we actually have Fusion 4x4, Kingpin 60 front, with also a Dana 80 rear. It's their Elite 80 rear. And so I have a three and a half inch axle tube up front with a three ace wall. And then I have chrome molly shafts in the front. And then we have an Eaton locker, which we're able to turn on and off with a switch. So with that, we also have the Yukon locking hubs. And then the rear is chrome molly shafts as well. And we're running uh, 513 gears in this one. And the reason we went 513 was a little bit more for the off-road. Not only did I want to have a little bit more of a lower rate of, um, for crawling, I also wanted to have that extra torque for towing that trailer. And so far, the torque for that trailer, you can't even tell it's there. Like, it just goes. <laughs> it's like... Uh, most like three sixes, and I see a lot of people with the gas three sixes towing our Conqueror trailer. So we have a Conqueror four by four trailer, and I see them going, and I can pass people. And those three sixes, man, they're like redlining at four or five thousand RPMs trying to tow. And with this Eco Diesel, there's no problems whatsoever. So um, I, I can't say enough about that with going on. Suspension wise, we ran a rock crawler, three link, no limits lift. So front and rear, this Jeep has a long arm front and rear where we cut all the control arm brackets off, re-welded all new brackets in, put them in the right place. We actually stretched this front end because of the 43 inch tires. We ran the, the axles are a 74 inch wide axle width, which a normal UD60 is 69 inches or 69 and a half inches. A Super Duty axle is 72 inches and I'm running 74 inches. Because of these 43s, I didn't want to hit the frame and I wanted to make sure that I could get enough articulation on it where I'm not hitting uh, core supports or hitting uh, rear fenders and stuff like that. So we slid this axle ahead about an inch. And so we have custom drive shafts from Adams Drive Shaft. They, gave a, they got us front and rear drive shafts the rear drive shaft is a one piece. So on, uh, uh, depending on the model, 
like a Gladiator, the Gladiators have a carrier bearing and it's a two-piece drive shaft. And on the Wranglers, it's a one-piece. And so this one is actually a one-piece drive shaft from Adam's drive shaft. And it's very stout. We have yet to have any problems with that. Um, bump stops, we actually have this thing fully set up. So it misses the fender by about a half of an inch. These are KBD fenders. These are plastic molded fenders, and then we had them custom painted. The fenders actually are just kind of screwed on, similar to the factory Rubicon fenders. And so if for some reason we take a hit or a rock on a trail, they'll actually just rip right off and not actually tear the whole body apart. So that was kind of one of the things where I wanted to have the look of it and very high clearance. I didn't want to have this lip hanging down here two inches so that we had an issue with rubbing. I wanted to get as much articulation and pushed up as much as possible. So we actually got these KBD fenders and I have to say I love them. Plus it also retains the factory look of the Gladiator lighting that would come standard on the fender. We want to retain that with their LED light that they have here. And so it, it really has been great. So I, I absolutely love that. So with the front end here, we actually, with the Fusion 4x4 axles, we have the two and a half ton Fusion 4x4 front tie rod and drag link. And so they're fully adjustable and they're all aluminum. So if you hit a rock, it doesn't just automatically bend it. And it, what it'll do is it'll push it in, but it, has the, it doesn't carry the memory that a steel would. And so it'll actually come back to straight, they say 90% of the time. All right, from this we have PSE Hydro Assist Steering, which allows with these 43-inch tires for us to, on a rock or even just as a daily driver, turning and being able to turn the steering wheel when you're on a rock. So this Hydro Assist paired with their big uh, bore box. We swapped out the steering box from a stock Jeep and actually put their box in. Makes a world of difference here. Uh, for as for steering capabilities and wandering and stuff down the road all that stuff seems to be gone now So that's one really great thing Moving around to the side So one thing that we ended up doing that I would say is not for everybody. It's definitely not the most cost-effective thing but we, uh, we get people when we're out and about they're like man those things are show Jeeps and they don't even go off-road they're I've already heard them called street princesses and I can tell you that these are the farthest thing from street princes that is humanly possible um, as far as that goes. The reason though that people say that and they wonder about that is because we did PPF and for people that don't know what PPF is that's paint protection film and so it's a clear film that goes over the entire body of the Jeep. And when I say entire body I'm talking inner fender liners, hood, fenders, inner up fenders along with roof doors everything gets pp wrapped and so it's a self-healing wrap that actually in the sun like sitting here baking today in the sun will actually take out any scratches or imperfections out of the wrap itself so when people walk by it they're like man your things looks like a street princess because there's no scratches in it that is why we don't have scratches in any of our stuff some of our other Jeeps, we don't have that, but with our two new Jeeps that we built recently, we did it to the other one. At first I was on the fence about it. I was like, man, I just don't know if it's worth the money. I could paint the Jeep twice for what it cost really, but, or get it buffed out three or four times throughout the thing. But when you go off road and you come back, if you don't buff it right away, it doesn't look good. And so we wanted it to look really nice the minute I got off the trail, go to there, get a car wash and bam, here we are basically, basically scratch free. And when I say that, I mean, if you take a rock to it and just go running down the side of it, or if you get a really big tree branch and you're trying to rub it along there, it can actually tear the wrap. But tearing the wrap is a lot easier and cheaper than to replace one panel on the hood. So I, I chose to go that route because I thought that was more beneficial for us. But I just wanted to clarify as far as our street princesses, they, that they really aren't. So um, hopefully that is a good thing for you guys to um, 
understand now if you didn't know what PPF was, now you do, and maybe it's an option for you. If you have a really nice Jeep and you don't want it to get scratched and you like to go down tight trails, which we do. I, I mean, I will literally bulldoze right down a trail that's made for a four wheeler and I will go right down it with this thing. And they're like, you guys are nuts. And it's like, well, whatever, if it scratches, it scratches. And I'll come out just looking like this. So, um, but coming around here, we have rock slide engineering steps. Rock slide engineering steps, I ended up having issues with getting in and out of the Jeep. I'm young, but at a young age, I had a, I had a hard earlier life pouring concrete for a living. What ended up happening, uh, we were out in Moab a few years ago and my back was fine for quite a few years because I wasn't jumping in and out, but we were doing a bunch of filming and stuff and I was jumping in and out, jumping in and out and I was getting out and landing on my left hip. And when I was landing on my left hip constantly, I ended up getting a bulge disc in my lower back and Long story short, had to have surgery. Don't want it to happen again. Roxland Engineering is by far the best way for us to go. And it allows me to get out without having to jump down. I take it a little bit easier now as I'm getting older and I am only getting older. So these Roxland Engineering steps, the minute you pull this out, the steps come down. The minute you shut the doors, like a two or three second delay, goes back up and then you can actually take these wheeling off road. So these steps, there's a switch inside. So the minute we go on a rock crawling trail and I'm getting to some rocks, in case someone else opens up the door and I'm not aware of it, I flick the switch off and then these lock where they don't, they actually don't come down. And so I actually purchased the quarter inch skid plate that goes over the top of them. So with having the skid plate, they say, 99% of the hits that these plates will take, it's not gonna, it's going to protect your rockers. And that's the big thing that we wanted because I want to protect our rockers, but also be able to get out. My, my two daughters are young and it's not the easiest thing to get up into a vehicle with a four and a half inch lift and 43 inch tires. So it makes it even easier for them to get in and out too. So that's another reason why I chose the rock slide engineering steps. I also, we wanted to have a rock lights so with the rock lights, we did choose Oracle lighting. That one was kind of a hard one to choose. I didn't know which, I put a couple posts out there. I haven't came across a particular kit yet that I fell in love with. And so with that, I went with Oracle lights. It was a nice kit at a very reasonable price, centrally located. You can use Bluetooth and a switch, so you can change the colors. And so we did their eight light kit. I put one right here underneath the rockers so when you get out, you can see at night. I put one right here on the fender so that you can see your tire when you're wheeling, one under the front bumper, and I did that all the way around. I staggered them all the way around so this way when we're off-road, we can really see our lighting, especially at night. So it works as a really great thing. It's mostly for night wheeling. Um, I don't, I mean, I guess you can use it for show too. We use it mostly for wheeling purposes or trail riding. So you can see around the Jeep when you're trying to park it or level it. Everybody knows when you get to a campsite at most of the time, it seems like it's after dark because you can never find the one you want. And so you can have those lights on and then level your rig out. But um, coming back here, we have the Fox 2.5 inch performance series adjustable Fox shocks as well. And these are uh, fully for suspension travel. We did the longest shocks that are made, which I think it's like 12 and a half inches of suspension travel. And so these work really great. And then our, uh, I don't think I actually mentioned our wheels. They're a KMC 235 grenade wheel. And these are actually a 20 inch wheel with a 43 inch Pro XS on it. And so these, this wheel combo is a beadlock that we do use and it works great. We've never had a problem with them. And I'm telling you, I've already put these things to the test. And so I can definitely say that KMC wheels are a really great wheel. So moving on to the back here, Next Venture Motorsports, we did the front bumper. We're doing the rear bumper. It's the ultra high clearance bumper. And with this, we wanted to shave off as much weight as physically possible of this thing. Some of our other rigs are a little on the heavier side. And with this one wanting to be able to go rock crawling with it, officially hardcore rock crawling with it, I wanted to have it as light as possible for less chances of stress on other components of the vehicle. And so we did their ultralight series bumper uh, with some Baja 
scene lights in the rear. These are S2 Baja rear lights for shining up behind us so we can see backing up to a trailer or just being on a trail. So that really is a nice thing that we did there too. With that, it retains the factory hitch because with towing our off-road camper, I didn't want to have an aftermarket hitch in a bumper. I wanted to retain that factory hitch with the factory payload. And so we kept that there. This tire, everybody's gonna be like, I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about this. This tire is massive. Yes, it is. There's no doubt. Not only is it massive, the tire carrier that holds it is massive. We did a Rusty's Off-Road reinforced tire carrier. They make a kit that they specify it's 42 inches, but when I called them, they gave me the weight capacity of their tire carrier and said that, I told them what I had and said that it is no problem carrying that weight on the back of this door. That was one reason I hesitated for so long on how big to go with this Jeep because I wanted to carry a spare tire if we were in some remote areas and didn't want to be stranded with not having a spare tire. So with the Rusty's off-road tire carrier, it, ha it bolts into the factory location and then they have a backing plate that goes over the top of that to sandwich in between the sheet metal and everything to make sure that it's not going to bend or twist or anything with you. And I can say right now that this tire carrier is phenomenal, it's amazing. Not only is it amazing for that, they actually have a third brake light inside the tire that you could still see your third brake light. I don't technically need it here in Wisconsin, but having that is great. And it also, their tire carrier retains the factory reverse backup camera. I didn't have to do anything else as far as rewiring or any of that stuff. This kit just worked flawlessly with it. They had an adapter plate that used from them and put that right inside, bolted it in, off we go. It was that simple. And so I have to say, Super, super impressed with their product. Very high quality. I would definitely recommend the Rusty's Off-Road Tire Carrier. It does come in black. I'm more of a color match person. I love my stuff color matched. The General's color matched. This is color matched. And so I color matched their rear tire carrier just so it kind of blended in and looked like it was meant to be on the vehicle and it's a factory item. Ultimately, if it was my choice, this would be a factory item from Rusty's, but it's not. So the factory tire carry came off and this went on in place of it. So one of the other neat things is I was trying to make this thing as much incognito as possible. And when I say incognito, I just didn't want to have this big gaudy thing with lights all over it everywhere and uh, mounts all over. I'm trying to make a nice clean look, I guess. And with that, I actually did the Cyclone lights. So these are the KC Cyclones. And what I did is they have a screw hole in the very center of the light. I popped that plate back up. It's just a piece of plastic. Pop that up, drill the hole, put that through. And I wired that into my factory auxiliary switches. So now I have two nice chase lights for going down the trail. I can't, I, I definitely recommend chase lights for everybody with dusty conditions, snowy conditions. You just don't know. Um, like the brake lights, you just can't see. And so having those yellow fluorescent lights at the very top of your vehicle where the dust is, you could see right through the dust with the ambers. That's why we ended up doing chase lights and I would recommend it for everybody. So after that, moving on to the interior here real quick, we went with the SHW off-road ultralight system. This system, when I first received it, came out of pallet and I was thinking to myself, man, this thing's gonna be heavy, I need two people. <laughs> Went over there to grab it and then I had somebody else ha help me grab it and he ended up lifting the whole thing without me even helping him. So this thing weighs under 40 pounds. It's a big box, but whatever they manufactured out of, I don't know the exact wood, but whatever they did turned out to be absolutely great. This stuff, there are no actual slides. The slides on this thing are actually just uh, like polyurethane that they put on the very bottom of the, they put on the bottom of the uh, drawer, I guess you could call it. And uh, then also in the box. So this thing slides that nice in and out with a pinky finger. The, the even better part is you could take this thing in the house. So you don't have to pack it in the vehicle. You don't have to carry all your stuff to the vehicle. These things come out so easily that you can pack all your recovery gear or canned goods or whatever you're looking to do, rain jackets, sleeping bags, you name it. You can actually take these out, go pack them up, 
put them back in the Jeep and you're off to go. Another thing is with having the, this being able to come out, I retain the factory storage area that is in the very bottom of this thing. So like my, I could put tools in the very bottom of this tray that spans the whole width of this thing. I can have that all accessible through here. And that's another really great thing. And with our Jeep being as tall as it is, I can actually tilt this instead of having it straight up where my wife probably can't see inside of it. Now she can pull it out, look inside of it, grab whatever she needs and flip it back up, put it back in. That is the next thing that I would say is absolutely great. So that's SHW off-road. We're planning on doing some pack outs here for tools. So when we're on a trail off-roading, I'll have built-in tools into this chest. No straps needed. This one I went without a rear cargo basket. I've had them in the past. They're great to have, but I didn't want to have to strap all my stuff down. I'm trying to make this one just simple go. And with that, uh, having the pack out system in here that's not installed yet, that is going to be what we're going to go with back here, which is great. And then I'm just going to run when we're using the Ursa Miner camping, I'm going to, instead of doing a whole auxiliary battery system and everything else, we're just going to use our Jackery. We have a Jackery 1000. So we'll put that in the far corner over here with a charger. There's a port in the Jeeps back here for charging and that thing will just charge on its own as we're driving. So that's been another really great thing. Over here, power tank. We worked with power tank to get these uh, power tanks in a bunch of our vehicles. We have one permanently mounted in Rocky. That is our gray gladiator, which is dedicated for rock crawling. And so we're able to fill these things up and our tires, we could fill up a 43 inch tire from about seven, eight PSI up to 18 PSI, just to get back on the road to a trail or something in under 45 to 50 seconds per tire. So granted you only get about on a 10 pound tank, somewhere around probably 12 to maybe 16 tires. So four times maybe you can fill up and then that's it. But uh, you could just refill them at your local gas, uh, welding gas company or off-road shop. So it works out or a beverage company, you can do that too. So power tank is definitely the way to go. We have their mount that's mounted to the roll bar. And I can't say we use that in our trip to New Mexico quite a few times because we're sitting there and I'm just like, man, I want to air down, but I don't want to take forever to air up. With having two rigs with 43s or 42s are our, our street tires, it takes with an air compressor five to six minutes per tire and times that by eight tires because there's two of us. So with the power tank, I can do all of them in basically eight minutes. It takes longer to undo the valve cover, putting the thing on and then actually physically airing it up. So gotta say wonderful things about power tank. We made our way to the back here and got to the underneath the rear, the rear end here. So we have the rock crawler, uh, adjustable rear track bar that comes with the kit. And we have this wonderful, monstrous Dana 80. This is my second set of axles from Fusion 4x4. I actually just ordered a third set of Fusion 4x4 axles for our new Gladiator, which we're setting up to be a hardcore rock crawler for Trail Hero this year, getting that all set up. But this 80 in the rear has a four inch axle tube that's a half inch thick, custom ordered. And what a beast. They even uh, worked with Rock Crawler quite a bit, they partnered up with them, that they did a rear truss for us and welded this thing on for me. So the minute it got to our shop, it was already ready to bolt in. And this thing being a rear three link, just the articulation out of it is unbelievable where I can lift this tire almost 48 inches off the ground before any tire starts to come off the ground. We have our Fox shocks, as you see back here. And then we also have our Fox 2.0 bump stops, hydraulic bump stops. And they are set on spot on right now where that tire just misses the fender, misses any other components by like about a half of an inch of leeway is what I left myself. So this is really great. And then you can see this wonderful, beautiful stainless exhaust system that's mounted back here. Got that from uh, EOC, it's Performance Parts LTD out of Canada. They created a really, really nice stainless exhaust front to back. I don't think I've actually seen a better stainless exhaust in the in car world or anything. So if you have an Eco Diesel of a Gladiator, which I actually, once I installed this one, I ordered one for my other Gladiator Eco Diesel to match. 
the the craftsmanship and the quality is beyond far to none on how nice that thing is. So have to say nothing but great things about that. Let's move on to the inside. All right, so inside now we have our bulletproof bulletproof mounts, and there's two mounts on each side. Very very sturdy and and uh, holds really well. I wanted to leave the shelf in here just in case we threw a phone or something else up there or a remote control just anything or mount something. So I left that open because I don't know yet. And with that, we wanted to have, I have two phones. My wife, this is her controller, I actually, or her phone. I actually ran this wire behind the head deck all the way around, came out this flap because I don't like wires and ran it through here. I drilled a small, small hole, ran it through and then connected this up. So we have phone charging and Apple CarPlay as we're driving for our maps. And then this is another phone mount. And then we have our GoPro mount right here. But one of the coolest things and this, I'm so pumped for this. I had to scratch my head and scratch my head, scratch my head, figure out what I wanted to do. I actually mounted our comms because our comms, we have our own channel from the FCC that we paid for. So we have private channels that are digital. And so these are Kenwood radios that is actually in the glove box and it's hidden out of the way which we still have room in our glove box. I can still use it. So like our key for our wheel or our tires and wheels are in there. And then this Kenwood radio is in here as well. This is the coolest part though. I swapped out the Rubicon switches here. The Rubicon switches, you only can use them in four low. And I wanna be able to use my locker whenever I want, whether I'm in four high or four low. And sometimes I don't even want, I don't even need four wheel drive. I just need a rear locker to get out of some situations. And so I can manually just turn this on whenever I want and have front and rear lockers. Plus it gives me two extra auxiliaries to have wire lights wired in. So one of them's the radio and one of them's the chase lights. And I still have my factory four auxiliary switches there. But this is the awesome part. When I'm using my radio, when we're off road, which isn't all the time, and if we want to daily drive this thing, they they make a port that you can undo it and take it in and out. So there's a port here that we just put our mic in. And so when we're off road, I stick it right here. It's so awesome. It's right there whenever I need it. And I tell you what, it's called magnetic mic. And that thing is a beast. It never comes off. I mean, you can just hear it, <laughs> how solid that thing is. So um, I love this mic install and them having that port there that I'm able to relocate it instead. Because if, if I didn't have that, I would have to have my speaker coming out of the box. But I have the speaker coming up here behind the, the mirror, which you don't even really notice. And so it, the clarity is just amazing. I can't, I can't say enough. And then we have these mounts here for like our Garmin inReach slash GPS. These are mounted to the handles here. That's another really, really great feature. And then we just did some storage around the shifter and stuff for patches and stickers. And I don't know why, I always carry a tape measure and it comes in so handy all the time. I don't know why, but we do. And then you always gotta have a little hand sanitizer in case you're off road and need that. So we always carry a little bit of hand sanitizer. And so that's kind of the setup in here. We have, we always throw our stocking caps on our headrest along with our Claymore lights. So that's another thing that we do. We throw the lights around the headrest and that seems to work really good. So that's kind of a wrap up on uh, our 2023 Jeep Wrangler Eco Diesel. Uh, if you got any questions or parts that we have on here, the parts lift is pretty extensive. So I can't just throw everything in the description as I would like, but if you do just uh, hit us up on Instagram, uh, message me on there or message me right on uh, YouTube. I will try to get back to you. YouTube, I don't check as much as the Instagram. So adventure further. Same Instagram handle as our YouTube, but you guys can hit us up on there uh, until you see it on the road. <laughs>